The Hub Online. We're talking about rap, rhythm, and rhyme. We're doing our songwriting focus, and with us today, three amazing guys, Drew, Bex, John Corbin, and Fresh IE. Robert himself is here. We are going to have a fun time. I'm so glad you joined on. My name is Dale Borland. And I'm Cheryl Duick. I am so excited because maybe today I'll learn how to rap. Maybe. <laughs> Just maybe. <laughs> With these three guys, are you kidding me? Okay, um, I already our name. Your names have already been mentioned, but guys, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourselves, your background, how you got into doing what you do? Do I have to pick one of you? <laughs> Let's go, Drew. Let's go, Drew. Let's okay, go with Drew. Jump in there, buddy. Alphabetical order. You go first. Um. Okay. So, how's everyone doing? First of all. Good. We're doing good. Bing, bing, bing. Um, yeah. Oh. So, so, uh, well, a lot, a lot of my peers in, in Christian hip hop, they started in the world, but I actually started in the church because I was part of a youth group uh, in my in my local church, and um, there was a talent show, and they asked us to do something, and we were like, "What are we gonna do?" And they said, "You know, do a rap," and we were like, "Okay." So we tried it. Um, it was me and a couple guys. We tried it. It was well received, and from there we kind of just kept kept at it um but i'm the only one left standing as far as uh <laughs> the other guys going yeah, yeah the other guys didn't, didn't, didn't pursue it really yeah um yeah so that's pretty much uh how i started i i did go through a period of time that i started to think maybe i'd be better off in the world um and that was around a time when you know coming from toronto there's a lot of a lot of uh uh stuff going on here where our our, our hip hop scene in the mainstream has kind of picked up and become one of the predominant hip hop scenes as far as there's a lot of guys from here making the hits and whatever. So around that time, um, I started to kind of think, well, some of these guys are guys that I know. Some of these guys are guys who have recorded in the same places I've been at. So I started to get a little bit like, man, maybe I should try and break, you know, like kind of, I got a little distracted by the allure of success that was coming out of the city. And I started um, producing and sending beats to these guys and I would get responses back and so on. And my wife is the one who pretty much said, listen, if you're going to go that route, I can't. Because all of us know that making music takes sacrifice. Yeah. Uh, a lot of times our significant others have to take a big lot of sacrifices. To um, be led by God, I don't feel comfortable making these sacrifices and, and so on, so on. So that kind of shifted me back and I kind of brought it back to my first original intention, right? In a nutshell. Drew, how old were you? You think you remember back? Um, Let's see, the youth group must've been around, I must've been around like 17, 16, 17, something like that. So you got the bug and then you, st <laughs> you started to get into it. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. And what's really amazing, Drew, what I was reading about you is that the music that you've made, I'm sure you've made several songs since then, and you have been successful in getting what 500,000 streams on Spotify oh, that, and some others. That is right. No, I was saying, I was saying, uh, by God's grace, it's actually way past that now. Like, I have to go and update that information. Um, yeah, I, I've been very, I've been very uh, blessed to have a lot of streams on a typical song that, that I put out or album that I put out. And you were nominated for was it a Covenant Award for your music as well? Yeah, um, yeah, I've been nominated for a few things. Um, yes, once again, by God's grace, because you know it's uh, yeah. it's just me. He actually won he won award this year, man. Yeah, yeah. So incredible, incredible. So you started at youth. So speaking it's of. Yeah. yeah, I was gonna say let's go to John. And what's the special, John? What got my attention with you is you have a heart for you. So yeah. let's, let's hear a little bit about your background and, and how you started in rap. And tell us a little bit about Spark as well. Oh, okay, yeah, absolutely. Um, thanks for having me. Um, yeah, so for me, uh, since I was about 13, I was um, involved in the community as a volunteer, working at camps, at camps, school programs, basketball coach, all that kind of stuff. Um, I can't tell you exactly why that motivation came so strongly, but um, throughout my youth, I was working with youth. Um, maybe it's uh, maybe it's the desire to be a teacher, which I'm a high school teacher. Um, just like I like working with young people. 
um, when I got to university, uh, when I was when I was a teenager, I would you know I made made music. I learned how to play the drums. Uh, went went to university, Wilfrid Laurier University, Golden Hawks. Well, what? Uh, <laughs> then um, hey, I went to Wilfrid too. So there you go. Wilford grads, yeah, come gold. on now. <laughs> Um, the first, my first year, I started playing bass, learning to play bass. The first year, our campus radio station was in um, the like the student area. Like you could, you can see the radio show happening, and you can also just walk in. So um, for Canadian hip hop fans, uh, DJ Tilo was there spinning. He was a student, um, and uh, he's he's a great DJ. He's won you know a number. Of, he's won DMC championships and. He on, he's on tour now with Shad, who is also a, a uh, and we all sort of went to school together. Um, so Tilo, I just got, I went in and sat down and watched him scratch and, and do his show. And he said, you know, you can get a show on here if you want. Mm. And uh, just spent a little bit of time getting to know people that like hip hop. Um, and that was, you know, the culture was the new thing to me. The culture was something I didn't understand. Um, maybe that was, you know, from a bit of a sheltered upbringing. Um, but understanding the culture was a real key to me. And uh, the next year, my second year, I started a show. And it was a hip-hop show that was designed to find the common elements between um, Christian artists that were speaking good social messages uh, and people, out, you know, and people that are in the, so the rest of this, the hip-hop culture doing the same so it was a it was a purposeful through line a purposeful dance between uh, you had to be good and you had to be on point with your message uh and i and i saw the the, the connections and so what happened was in in the community at laurier there were a, um, a lot of mcs that would uh you're practicing their craft and it was this thing where people would show up to your radio show and ask to freestyle and mm. so you get used to giving up part of your show to, uh, to these MCs. And so what I started to do is collect beats and then started learning how to blend the beats so that we could just keep going back and forth. And so these ciphers would form on my show. Uh, and then I started to learn how to mix. Uh, and so then I became the DJ for these MCs. So there's, you know, four or five hip hop shows on the station. And, you know, we all get to know each other. And so one day I showed up to someone else's show and people were freestyling and I just asked if I could get on the mic. Um, and whatever happened, happened. I started to freestyle and it came off really well. And people were really impressed because they didn't know that I had that in me. And honestly, neither did I. Um, <laughs> in my third year of university, I was doing my show again uh, and just getting into the rhythm of um of, of doing the show and rocking with mcs and starting to formulate some ideas about how to move hip-hop into social justice initiatives that were happening within the school so i'm meeting a lot of mcs i'm meeting people in the christian market people are sending me stuff now um uh, you know when cmc distribution was a thing i had a contact there and i would get new music and all of that was just to continue building and, and communal stuff. So that was cool. And I thought that was my lane, you know, promote shows, do radio, start to do hip hop reviews, writing reviews and for websites and local magazines and all that, like really involved in the culture. And then one day I was in my room, I closed my door, I put on a beat and I started to freestyle. And it was like, to me, it was like a out of body spiritual experience. It was like the Holy Spirit just came. And, you know, if people are not, familiar with that concept if they don't share my faith and that's going to be a strange thing but it just it felt like uh i found the gift of words uh and no, was, like that. yeah and then all of a sudden it was like okay this is something i can do and by the time i was done university i had a demo done i was entrenched in a community um uh, i stayed in that community found a church continued to work and figure out what i want to do with my life but i was pursuing the musical gift and um, that community also would um, wind up seeing like the gifts that I had. My church was enabling me to do that gift, rapping for pastors, doing stuff and create, hosting our own creative nights, like really investing in the arts. And then when I had an album ready, but no money to press it, uh, some good friends gave me some money to put CDs out. And that was just sort of, you know, I was a way to the races. So 2007 is when my first album came out. Uh, I got 
nominated for a, a GMA Covenant Award. And, um, and I've been making music ever since. And I've got three full length albums out. Each of them have been GMA nominated, um, which is, you know, that's cool. It's not why I do it, but it's cool. Um, and and uh, right when I was about to sort of uh, feel like it's run its course, I'm having kids, I have a job as a teacher. Um, a major life events are happening and I really want to just give up music around 2014, 2015. I had some friends again come alongside me. Uh, one of them was starting a label. I got signed to that label in 2017. So, uh, you know, after, you know, 10 plus years of doing it just as a hobby and an, an individual getting connected to a label and it feels like a renewal for me where I'm doing music at this new, newer level. Um, uh, so Spark Rap Coaching is the thing that I sort of, as I've been thinking about, okay, how do I do this in a semi-professional level? Um, it's really been about, you know, teaching and speaking. So I've been trying to go into schools and, and tell stories using hip hop um, to connect with identity and faith and mental health. Um, but then Spark is this new thing that I've started up. Um, it's an online, uh, it's an online course designed for young people to, to take them through the process of writing a hip hop song. So for the summer, with a lot of summer camps canceled, um, I'm going to be launching the Spark Rap camps where for a month, um, students can lock into, um, you know, eight, eight hour long lessons and lots of interactive stuff and homework for them to write and something that allows them to create more than consume. Um, so it's a, le it's a project I've been working towards. Uh, around my job and my family and it's you know I'm moving at a tortoise pace but um, about to announce this week yeah that these that these camps will be open July and August um, for ages 10 to 17 and then there's a number of adults that have also inquired like oh I don't have kids but I'd love to learn how to rap yeah so uh, I want to run an adult stream as well that sort of runs through July and August kind of once a week so um, that's that's right on the verge of being announced maybe by the time this gets released that'll it'll be there but um uh, people can check that out at rapcoach.ca and it's really just about providing um you know guidance in the culture and the true essence of the culture so people aren't misinformed by you know all the consistent messages that are seen in a lot of mainstream hip-hop and then um and then just having someone that cares uh, along with them right with the spark creativity right. finding that spark can improve so much more of your life and I know parents want to see that for their, for their children to get them engaged. And so that's where a lot of my, my passion, because hip hop did that for me. So yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I see that as, you got guidance there, you got mentorship and all those things that go along with that. That is strong, man. That's cool. Man. I love it. And uh, Robert, love it. let's hear from you fresh. See how. Yeah, man. Like I'm, I want to chime in on that because that's exactly where I'm at too. Um, John, like I'm doing something very similar for education, development, inspiration for youth. And uh, it's, uh, it's a music school, but it's a mentorship uh, where, you know, we'll, we'll, for three months, we'll bring in like 35 to 40 students or from the ages of seven to like 30. And we'll, we'll spend a three month time with them where we invest, where we build them up and we help to help them find the greatness that's inside of them. So, um, and that Edify has been going probably for since 2016 now. So um, it's been great. We've seen probably 270 something students come through already. And uh, you know, a lot of kids from reservations will come through and, and, and invest time into the program and uh, learn how to songwrite, and, uh, learn how to do music videos, um, learn, learn how to, you know, piano theory and things like that. So uh, make beats, like, you know, everything, like everything you can think of that, that I do, I try to multiply into other people. Um, and I've been doing that for years. You know, it's exactly what John's doing is, is the path that I'm on right now too. I've been on it for a little, for a little bit now, so. Uh, but for me, I started in my first, I wrote my first rhyme in 1989. Yeah, and uh, that was a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And um, so, I mean, I've been in hip hop from, from, from jump, like from, from way back, you know what I mean? And, and, uh, but I've never really did it as, um, as, as, as a, as a, as a career or, you know, a career, cho a career choice, nothing like that. But it was more of just, it was just culture, you know, it was just a part of me. I mean, I grew up when I was a kid, old funk music, like, you know, uh, uh, Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes, Teddy Pendergrass, you know, that's what I grew up. A lot of my friends listened to like, you know, Quiet Riot and Twisted Sister and all that <laughs> stuff. I was listening to like, you know, Sly and the Family Stone and, and Parliament Funkadelic, you know what I mean? Like all the old funk stuff. Yeah. So, um, 
you know, music has been a refuge for me since since I was since I was born, really, because I grew up with no father, and you know, my mother was lost in the streets, and so um, music was my refuge. You know, uh, I remember from way back in the projects, um, I would put Michael Jackson on and and put my glove on and and it's, and put my little ghetto blaster down in the middle of the, of the projects, and I would do Michael Jackson, and the whole projects would watch me. You know what I mean? So it was like. You know, from the beginning, my auntie said that I was always doing little performances for my uncles and, and, and just really trying to, you know, lift people up all the time. So cool. me, music was always a big part of um, my process of, of growing into where I'm at right now. So, but like I said, it was never something as, as a career choice until um, 1998, I was going to prison for 14 years. So I was going to, I was going to prison, my, my life was just, gone down the drain man you know just just getting caught up in the streets and caught up in my addictions and, and all that and uh you know um basically i was at the end of my road getting ready to go to prison and uh i ended up meeting up with this blind man coming back from this liquor store one night and that blind man when i when i saw him he was in the middle of the road and the cars were going around him and and, and nobody was stopping to help this man so you know, I put my I put my alcohol down and I yelled out to him, went to go help him off the street. And uh, he turned around, he heard my voice, and I and I guided him safe to the to these projects or you know around my around my spot. And then I went home and I couldn't drink. All I could do was is, you know, just think about my life. Like yo, I'm like I'm I'm going to jail. You know, I'm just you know caught up in these addictions and I don't want to end up like this blind man. You know, like, I don't want to be blind walking with no one to guide me. And so uh, I remember thinking that night sitting in my little apartment, you know, getting ready to go to jail. And I was thinking, man, I'm going to jail for 14 years. Like, my life is over. Like, it doesn't, my life doesn't mean nothing. Like, there's, I, if I, I don't exist, like, I, I don't even have a, a social insurance number. I don't have a birth certificate. I, I don't even, ex I'm not even on the radar. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've never paid taxes in my life at that time. You know what I mean? I was just feeling really hopeless and, and just giving up, you know? And probably about 30 minutes of just thinking about all the, all the dirt I did, all the people I've hurt. Man, I remember looking out my window and there was these four people with flashlights uh, uh, outside my window. And there were four different people too. There was a, a black person, a native person, a white person and a Chinese person, four different cultures. And I'm thinking, that's weird. I'm li I, live in, I lived in the hood in Winnipeg here and uh, you don't normally see that kind of people together in one you know as a group at like one in the morning in the in the hood you know it was just mm -hmm. weird to me so i yelled out to them like well, you know what are you guys doing outside my outside my window and they said they were neighborhood watch that they're watching a man on my step and so i ran downstairs and i opened my door and there was at my step and then i so i ran upstairs and the only thing i could think of was is like god is that you you know, is that you guys like are you trying to give me a sign like you know how do i how do i know if that's you you know like i started so i started talking to this god like i started communicating with him like this god that everyone was saying that was gonna you know god is gonna touch your life and god is gonna do this and god's gonna and i'm like man well, where was god when my mom was all caught up like where was god when my dad gave up on me so, like where was god in all those years all of a sudden now god wants to be in my life you know what i mean like that was my that was my attitude you know it was like if god is god then then he has to show me because he wasn't there this whole time, you know? Mm -hmm. And so when I saw that blind man, I ran upstairs, started talking to this God for about a week straight. I, and honestly, I, for like a week, week and a half straight, talking to an invisible God, talking to some God that's gonna deliver me from my addictions and, and set me free from my jail, my prison. And so I'm talking to him, I'm reading this Bible and, and you know, I'm, and I, I basically, I feel like I'm going crazy. I, I think like if, I, if, if God doesn't exist, I'm basically talking to myself, you know what I'm saying? And so um, after about a week or so of talking, one day I was on my, on my futon and I heard God's voice for the first time. And God said this to me, God said, that blind man is you walking blind in these streets. And if you don't turn away from this life you're living, you're gonna die in these streets. Mm -hmm. And God used the same words that I use on the blind man when I was telling him to come off the street or he's gonna get hit by a car, he's gonna die. God was using those same words on me. And so as soon as I heard that voice, it was like, it was so loud, but it wasn't audible and it shook me up inside. Mm 
and I fell on that futon and I just gave my heart to God. And four years from there, I was on the red carpet at the Grammy Awards, hmm. um, ma making Canadian history. And I and I and I connect those con those moments because I'm I'm not without me without Jesus and who I am as fresh IE, I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing right now. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I, I never knew how to make music back then. I mean, I was in the hip hop culture. I was in the music always. I was writing rhymes. I was with the, you know, I'd have a DJ spinning instrumentals and stuff like that. But at that time, God started doing all these little miracles in my life. I started to hear music in my head. And then I would start to go after those sounds and, 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 and you know, got this beat machine. I started finding those sounds and then just started making this music, but I had no clue about how I did it. Chord progressions, keys, nothing, just, mm -hmm. just from, the sounds that was coming in my head, you know, and God was just showed me how to find that music. And I yeah. started making music from there. And I made that Grammy nominated album in my living room and did the vocals in my, in my linen closet. You know what I mean? So, and it made it past all these big names. And, and next thing you know, here's me, this, this guy that was going to prison and you know, I'm at the Grammys and I'm like, I don't know. I have no clue. Like guy, when I was sitting at the Grammys, bro, I was thinking like, I looked next to me, there was the Dalai Lama, T.I., <laughs> <laughs> there was like all these Mike Jones. I'm like, I'm looking around. I look over there. There's Kanye. And there's all these people. And, I'm, and I look at my wife and I'm like, what are we doing here? Like, what's, going, what's happening, you know? But I realized that God was using it as it, to, to, to get glory through my testimony of what was going on in my life because he knew that my heart was humble about who I am. I wasn't, I wasn't trying to be a star. I wasn't trying to be a rapper. You know what I mean? I wasn't trying to be a dope rapper. I just wanted to make a difference. You know, I just wanted to help people who are in the same situation that I was in, you know. Um, and so that's that's the key for me is, mm -hmm. you know, to to mentor, to mentor somebody is is simply mentoring each other's lives. Yeah. You know, seeing how how I am or seeing how John is in his good time and even in his hard time. This is where we learn from each other, not just in in, in the good times, but we learn when we're in the bad times, you know, some of our greatest victories is in in our losses and our defeat we learn the best lessons in in our losses you know what i'm saying yeah. so so music for me that's it's always been a reflection of the culture around me it's always been you know what i mean like whether it's me i've been to 380 indigenous communities and i've i've walked into communities and you know seen kids hanging from from um um swing sets and stuff like that and knowing that we live in this country and you know Music is a gift and a tool for us to bring healing to the nations. Look, look at King David. Saul had a demon, and the only way he could find deliverance was when David played the music. And there was, a, there was an anointing on that music that brought deliverance to Saul. You know what I'm saying? So music is a powerful tool. And sometimes we, it's important that we still learn the industry and learn, you know, about the finances this is important even jesus had a business and had an accountant and, and all that stuff i mean his cat was kind of shady but um <laughs> um but but music is 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 the purpose of music is is a is a tool for healing you know yeah. what i'm saying and it brings healing to people man mm -hmm, yeah. so uh yeah that's that's so true and you know what's really cool is robert god used a blind man to help you see it's exactly just, it's amazing and I've never seen that blind man again in my life. I've never seen him again. You know what I mean? So, like, I believe that that was an angel, man. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. It sounds yeah. like that Kendrick song, man. It sounds like how much a dollar <laughs> cost, you know? Yeah, 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 for sure, man. So, yeah. So, I, I mean, uh, um, you know, it's it's always, like, I've, I've always written. When I write a song, I'll sit here and, and write a song believing that it's going to reach certain people in a desperate time and and if, if god can use me to, to to write words that will um save someone's life then that means more to, than than grammys and and yeah. all the awards that i've received you know what i mean uh, mm -hmm. it's always about people it's always about the people that god's placed around me like people like why don't you go to la i'm like man i'm going i'm going to tuck the yucta they're just as important up there too you know what yeah. i'm saying like mm -hmm. like god put me in canada for a reason we got to impact the nation that we're in. There's something going on in Canada that God's doing. Like, what what is God saying for us as a people right now, as the church? What is God saying to us? I mean, there's a huge divide in the nation right now with with all the stuff going on north in North America. But even in think about Canada, there's a lot of things that have to be talked about. You know what I mean? At within the church, 
And think about in the 70s when Martin Luther King was murdered, right? What stopped the riot? Anybody, like, does anybody remember what stopped that riot with Martin Luther King? It was actually documented in the movie too, but it was James Brown. When they brought James Brown that. in and he did a concert and he started to speak to the people and the people listened to him. And, and it, it was a powerful moment in, in, in terms of music and, and culture because music has always shaped culture. Mm -hmm. You think about when, when the seventies came, the music changed and then the people changed the way they dressed, the way they talk. And then when the eighties came, they changed the way they dressed and because of the music and it changed. Mm -hmm. So true. music has always brought change to culture. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? If you're just tuning in now, for those of you who are viewing, thank you for doing it. We are the hub online. We're talking about songwriting exclusively right now, rap, rhythm, and rhyme. We've got uh, with us an amazing panel. We've got Drew Bex, John Corbin, and Fresh IE, Robert Wilson. We are just having so much fun, and we got still to tap into talking about songwriting. Guys, what I really, really love about your testimonies, or uh, what your background is, is your heart. Your heart behind this is just, you're using the gifts that you are given to just spread a message of hope and help people. And you're using, you're not just using it for yourself, you're using it for other people. I just think that's absolutely awesome. So let's dive in a little bit more into the technique. First of all, how do you even define rap? Like what is rap to you guys? Uh, so basically, um, what, what, what is the definition of rap? Um, there's definitely a distinction between rap itself and hip hop, even though they're, in, even though they're interchanged, they're used interchangeably often, but, um, rap is the hip hop is the culture that rap is a part of, right? Yeah. Rap, rap itself is the, is the art form of putting the words together, um, that rhyme, you know, even though today, <laughs> these days, that's debatable, but, um, <laughs> in its purest form, in its purest form, rap is the art form that is a part of the broader hip hop culture, right? It's the, it's the rhyme part. I remember, um, you know, it, listening to, to rap music and, um, you know, I, I have this clip stuck in my head about, you know, connecting it to rhapsodizing, right? Or to rhapsodize, right? Like speaking about something with like great enthusiasm. Um, and so, yeah, like, like Drew said, I think to me, it's really about the communication, like there's a form of it, but um, it's obviously an, an oral tradition and it's, a, and it's a way of communicating orally. And then it's just like enthusiasm, flavor, uh, expression, and, and, and what makes us, you know, unique. I would, go, I would go with what both of these guys said. Rap is the art form and, and hip hop is the culture we live in, the way we dress, the way we talk, the way, you know, and that's it. That, that is constantly evolving and moving and shaping and you know what I'm saying? Like, um, but also, you know, in in the oh, in the seventies, the the the, uh, the elements of hip hop were you know MC, b boying, um, graph artist, and and um, and DJ. And so one another thing I I realized too today is you got a rapper like like Takashi Six Nine, like for example, you know he's a rapper, but then you got an MC like KRS One, he's an MC. You know what I mean? Now, he's still rapping, but I mean, some I, I believe that some people are actually gifted with their you know, with their um, lyricism, you know what I mean? And then you got someone who can rap like Ice-T or, um, see, Ice Cube's on the, in the on both sides. <laughs> I think he has lyricism and he's a rapper, you know? So yeah, I think there's definitely a fine line between an MC and a rapper, but either way, it's all hip hop, you know? It's, yeah, it's all part old, of the culture. There's old school rap, and then there's the current day rap. Yeah. The, the yeah. real difference between like the, back in the day when you had like cool and the gang and whatnot you know it's, it's totally different yeah well cool and the gang is not really hip no no i'll yeah, tell you, I'll tell you back one thing in that, that genre a lot a lot of the music that hip-hop is 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 um the foundation on it is is all that old 70s funk mm -hmm. and you know mm -hmm. what i mean so yeah for sure yeah. and don't exactly. forget don't forget disco with that too well yeah sure yeah, yeah disco disco right. Hill and all that you know way back then yeah no no i was just gonna point out that they actually just changed the category because given the new style of rap that we have and whatever the new styles that we have they have they have to come up with a new category so they originally called it rap sung oh yeah but, right, but they just right. I, I think they just changed it to uh something like melodic rap or rap with melody yeah i heard, I I heard they, about yeah. That. yeah yeah sorry so melodic rap is the old style or is that current style it's not the exclusive current style but as you know a lot of the rappers that are popular 
do use melody when they rap, when they rap. Mm -hmm. So they had to kind of, and the problem with that was when they were giving out awards, it would be confusing because people would be like, for example, a guy like Drake would get best hip hop album or best rap album and you would listen to it and it's like he's singing all over it. Yeah. And people would be like, okay, well, did he deserve to get best rap, right? Yeah. So they came up with a new category, rap song. And I believe now they call it rap in melody or rap with, they recently just changed it to a different thing. But essentially it just means you're rapping, but you're also kind of singing, right? Mm -hmm. Which is what I often do. So, you know. And do it very well, by the way. Yes, indeed. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Because there was a noted shift for you, Drew, right? Like I, like there I was, there was. Yeah, like, so tell me about a little bit about when you made that shift. Because like you, I, since quarantine, you've gone on and spit bars, right? And, yeah. and it's like, you just remind these jokers, you could still rap, right? <laughs> but, and, yeah. and, like, and like hip hop, like, you know, MCs know, like in, in any of the music that you're doing, even the melodic stuff, like the bars are there. It's so, it's so yeah. that's so real. But like you made a, you made a shift, you made a conscious effort. Like when did mm -hmm. that come about? So that happened in 2017. Um, up until 2017, I was just kind of all over the place. I would spit bars. I would just, if there was a new style out, I would try it. I kind of didn't have a distinct sound. But what happened was um, I was in the middle of completing my album, uh, the good album, and uh, it was mostly bars, but I had some melodic tunes on there. And one song in particular called Running Man, I decided to release that as a single. And the response that I got for that song was so crazy that I was like, oh, you know what? I think I hit on something here. So I actually mm -hmm. went back, I actually went back and redid my whole album in that, like the majority of that album anyways, wow. in, that, in that style, because I realized that I, it's funny because for years I was trying to find a style and, and I'd be like, man, I wish I could find a style, but I would never be able to find it. And then one day I was just putting, you know, I was just naturally writing that song and, and it came out and the response I got was like, so crazy and people were telling me that's your lane. And I listened and I just kind of felt it. And I felt like, okay, I'm good at this. I'm going to go back and redo the album with this. And from there on, it was pretty much my signature style, right? Um, but every now and then, like, like you said, John, every now and then I have to remind them, right? Like I, I pretty <laughs> much, uh, <laughs> so these days I'm doing both. Word. Awesome. Okay, so just for our audiences, not everybody who's watching or who will be watching knows the, the spit bar and all that stuff. So what is spitting? What does that mean? Okay, so spitting, like when someone says you're spitting, they mean like you're just like, usually there's no melody involved. You're just, you're just rap, mm -hmm. like kind of like what we were talking about with the rapping and emceeing. Um, like if you're emceeing, you're spitting, like you're basically just putting out, like you're just giving out the lyrics or usually, you're usually um, saying stuff, like you're using metaphors, you're using, you're using wordplay, you're using uh, um, similes, you're using the different techniques that are involved in hip hop or in rapping. Um, that's, that's, that's what people usually talk about when they say you're spitting, right? Like you're, 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 you're showing your skill. So is it almost yeah. like freestyle? Is it almost like freestyling or no? Um, well, even, was... even, even the term freestyle has evolved because freestyle yeah. used to mean off the top of the head, right? Like you, you'd, you'd be saying, you'd be spitting, you'd be spitting, but you'd be kind of free, free flowing. But now a freestyle can pretty much mean anything that is kind of like, yeah, yeah like, it's just a verse like you know like well, well i'm spitting a freestyle it's just a verse right yeah. it has no no specific topic yeah like you know rappers I mean? are right rappers are right like freestyle versus specifically exactly. for when it's a cypher or something yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. okay so yeah so and with the like drew said the like showing skill i mean you know we we connect we connect bars like when i'm when i'm teaching you're talking about sort of musical theory and bars and like sort of counting beats along but when you're, um, but we use the same word when you talk about uh, multiple meanings within uh, with within a line. So, um, uh, so that's you know double on ent double entendres or triple entendres. Um, but you're trying to pack as much meaning into um, a line uh, as possible, and so it makes it, um, it you know it's poetic in that in that way. It, it takes a long time to unpack. I'm so that's yeah. that you are, the more writing. So let's talk about that in your writing scheme. You're taking a song in a line and you want to take one word and extrapolate that and expand upon that. You might find a different simile or something to work with that. Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, you know, you know, examples are always struggling to come to mind. But um, one of those things is, uh, you know, because I because I came up in the Ontario scene and and really enjoyed watching um, the 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 people ahead of me. Um, uh, 
like Promise and uh, mm. Relic, now Rel McCoy, Nifty, Nifty, uh, yeah. Seven Life, um, Manifest. One of the guys I mentored did a song with Manifest, um, and that was like a it was a, a dream for him. And the guy that the, the guy I was mentoring him was Crisis. And so in 2016, I was writing this um, rap about really you know, struggling to um, come to peace with myself and like you know I've got scripture, but I'm I'm really you know I I really not. I don't like myself. And so I'm trying to negotiate all this stuff. Um, and uh, uh, so I say, am I full of life or am I lifeless? I go out of my head just to, I go out of my head just to manifest a crisis. It's the good, it's the bad, it's the in-between, it's my wounds, it's my scabs, it's my silly dreams. So like the meaning in there is very simple, seriously. Like, you know, I'm having this, uh, you know, this personal issue and, and I'm all in my head. So, um, you know, so I'm manifesting this, this issue. But the song that Manifest did with Crisis was called It's the Good, It's the Bad. So if you know that reference, then you'll catch the extra meaning that's there. So you get me on one plane, mm -hmm. but you see I'm just messing around with my own knowledge. And, um, and the best ones, you know, the, the best MCs are able to, to project out and, and find these meanings that are relevant to the culture. And sometimes you can just keep it internal and like yeah. you know, hip hop heads will know what I'm talking about. Right. That, yeah. Kend Kendrick has a lot of that too. Like you, you can listen to that album like six times and get yeah. something new every time. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like you get to unpack it and you discover it and you feel, you appreciate when you do too. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like you find a nugget or something, you know what I mean? And as an yeah. English teacher, I appreciate that because you know, we're trying to get people into literature to unpack that. And so, you know, my next step as a teacher is, is instead of reading novels, I want us to study hip hop albums because there's yeah. a real appreciation, like you said, Fresh, like when you get it, you get it. And when you work for it, that's, you know, um, yeah. that's a reward. Yeah. And one thing I want to add to that, uh, John, one thing I want to add to that is just like, people ask, oh, what advice can you give me? I'm an up and coming rapper. And my answer is always read because yeah. When you enhance when you enhance your vocabulary, you have so much more words to rhyme, right? Yeah. And when, you, when you understand what words mean, then you you can use them, you, you know, like they they add to your arsenal. So definitely, like ever since I I grew up reading comic books mostly, but I also um you know read a lot of novels and so on, and just like it really 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 helps me with my my arsenal as far as words and, and rhyming. Yeah, I've heard it said many times: the source is your friend when it comes to writing. It's it's true, although I tell young people not to go there first, right? Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. like math, you know, um, you know, my dad never let me use a calculator mm -hmm. for, for years and years and years, right? So that I could get this muscle going. Right. So I tell, I tell yeah. folks like, yeah, like, yeah. draw from your draw from your well. And if you like yeah. Drew said, if you don't have a deep well, then read, you know, engage, learn. And, and it's also a fine line between um, like one thing that turns off a lot of people, especially these days, sometimes uh, even before, but especially these days, is when the rapper is using way too much big words. <laughs> mm, yeah, I know. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's a fine line. It's a fine line between using the arsenal, the the the, the words that are in your vocabulary, and also using words that the people you're trying to communicate to will actually understand. I think it goes yeah. back to that idea around communication, right? Like, yeah, that's we true. are trying to communicate, and it's. And so, you know, our message does need to land. Um, and it's yeah. we're not just, we're not flexing just to show how smart we are. Like we are trying to communicate something. Yeah. Also to be connected to the culture and being relevant to the people around you, because, you know, you can, I, I, there was actually an artist who uh, I, I saw, he was in the studio all the time and he would do the same thing. He would have a dictionary and da da da. And then it was always about that. I'm like, bro, you need to get out and get some life experience, man. That, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you need to get out there and see what's going on with the world. Let that let that give me some inspiration. Because sometimes we get, you know, too stuck in, in, in a certain place and we're not connected to the people. Even Jay-Z even said, to, said himself he had to go to Jamaica for a little while and just reconnect to the land, reconnect to the people because the money and all that just made him like he started making music, but it wasn't relevant. People was right. not catching it. You know, in touch yeah. from his audience. Yeah. You know, yeah, determining, sure. determining your lyrics and rhythm is one of the questions we have here is how you determine your lyrics and, and the rhymes and choose the lyrics. It's about life experiences. It's about communicating with your de demographic, right? So 
Yeah. yeah. And that's, that's true. It's so true. So choosing your words is uh, from your life experiences. Is that, would that be safe to say? Yeah. Um, yeah. But you also got to use like, like fresh just kind of said, you gotta, you gotta use words that are relevant to the culture. Yeah. Um, so if you're, if you're not a part, if you're a rapper, there are actually some rappers who are not, they're rappers, but they're not part of hip hop culture. And you can tell by their word choice. It's like, well, we don't, we don't use that. We don't say that in, in hip hop. Right? You know what I mean? Like in the culture, we don't say that. Like they'll use words that are just not part of the culture or that were part of the culture a long time ago, but are not currently part of the culture. Because when you think about what hip hop culture is, it's kind of like a code, right? Um, uh, it, it, and the code changes whenever people begin, whenever the masses begin, begin to figure out the code. <laughs> they change it yeah the code changes yeah 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 and it becomes kind of like almost like a uh uh it becomes almost like a what's the word i'm looking for like an identifier okay this person is not speaking the code so we can tell that they're not part of the culture they might be skilled at rap but we can yeah. tell they're not part of the hip-hop culture right um so for example like one of the words that uh is popular these days is people say no cap when they mean they're telling the truth they say no cap or they say I'm not capping, right? Um, that just means I'm not lying, right? No lies. So, mm -hmm. like, in my last song, I said, me and my crew like Avengers, but when we come through, no cap, right? Because <laughs> right. cap is cap is Captain America. So yeah, I said, would I be Avengers? Yeah. yeah but, so that's an example of, like, I'm using a word that is in the culture, um, yeah. but I'm also using a, 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 a metaphor, right? It's like a yeah. double-edged sword, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, let's let's break it down a little bit about when it comes to what steps do you take when you're trying to put together um, uh, a song. Um, let's take it from the basics. From the say, do you start with a theme? Do you start with with a hook? Do you start with somebody's conversation? Or um, for me, it's really spirit driven. Um, there's there's lines and words floating through my head all the time, um, and so I won't stop and engage until um, I can string a few lines together. And I can say, okay, this actually works. Um, and so you know, a lot of my communication comes from my spirit, right? It's my authenticity is a big part of my work. So trying to communicate the emotional, um, the, the emotional relevance of the moment. So um, something I wrote this year, uh, just catch, just caught me, right? Uh, um, I heard a song that someone else had put out, uh, it, it, like not put out, but um, had shared with me in a demo stage. I was like, oh, I really appreciate that. And he said, oh, if you want to jump on, like I'm just rapping about my March break. And um, in, in our, our creative minds often work well when we're doing mundane things. So as a family man with five kids, like I'm often doing dishes and cleaning up. And if I'm, you know, catching a break, I'm going for a walk or in the shower, then your, your mind just uh, clicks into place. So I thought, you know, what am I going to you know, write about where my March break was? Uh, and then the first line came to me, already overloaded before the COVID. And I was like, okay, we're good. Let's start writing. Like, I, I, this is it. It is about, you know, my stress, pressure. Um, I really like the way these words sound and connect together. And so now I will dive into it um, and, and try and finish out those 16 bars, those 40 seconds which is you know the the, the main uh, the main length of a hip-hop verse but i needed to have some kind of hook. Goes on that theme you bring, yeah. bring things yeah, to I want, yeah. yeah i want to know what where my heart is first uh, and if i can find something to say clever then i'll go from there yeah i'm pretty much the same too i'm, I'm very spirit spirit led in and um you know making songs for you know for uh for the for the times we're in right now you know what i mean so um a lot of my music is based around, you know, um, crisis and, and, you know, suicide and, and different things that are going on from people that I know who are going through it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So uh, it's you always for me. The chorus concept that you like, you think I got this chorus, I got this, this phrase, or I got this hook. It's like then... for me, like I, I, for me, I'll, I'll reach to, I'll reach to like a cry or, or a, you know, um, a, a moment of victory or finding that healing. So let's take the steps towards that healing. Mm -hmm. So the song will will be a journey, you know, into helping lead people into that healing, you know what I'm saying? Um, and, you know, so yeah, it, and then just really finding, you know, the right key or the right, you know, um, uh, you know, piano, piano to, to really start 
you know, getting the pulse of that song going, you know, and, and just building from there, you know, so uh, it's, but it's all, like I said, it's, it's different at different times. There are times where I'm just on, like what Drew talked about, just bars, like, all right, man, like, I mean, I've been in hip hop for a long time, so, you know, like, I'm, a, I'm an older cat, so I, I try and keep up with these young guys, so I let them know I can still spit, <laughs> but I can still spit when I want to, you know what I mean? I can wrap myself out of a corner if I have to. You know what I mean? No, but that's, one thing, that's, that's one thing I appreciate about you, man. Like you, like some of the stuff you sent me even and some of the, like it sounds relevant, man. Like it sounds like, like you can't, like, I've heard you spit, but you can also do the, 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 the new styles, you know what I mean? Yeah, even, yeah, yeah. Even, even your beat selection is is on point as far as like word. it's relevant. Yeah. Word, word, word. I can say for me, my process is usually, um, because I'm, a lot of my, my, my songs are melody driven, um, I'll have, like I'll, I'll I'll get some beats or I'll hear some beats, um, I'll go through some beats and I will come up with a melody based on whatever beat jumps out to me, whatever whatever melody hits me first, and I'll kind of start humming a melody, um, and then I'll go through. I have about at any given time I have about like ten to fifteen or maybe even ten to twenty different topics that I want to address. Right. Uh, so I'll hear the beat first then i'll get a melody then i'll say to myself okay which one of these topics that i want to address kind of matches with the feel of this melody or this beat and then i'll start going from there i'll i'll i'll, I'll pretty much go from there right um that's that's how i build most of my songs yeah drew do you um, do you find drew that you your musically is your hook or vocally it's the hook sometimes you you have a line you go oh man that's a good hook but you don't have a yeah. and you have another song that says oh that melody is a great hook so yeah. what he what when he means hook like in hip-hop the hook is is the is the chorus. the chorus yeah the chorus yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah. i'm yeah. yeah the chorus so i'm so i'm usually melody first and then i'll usually start looking for the words that that fit it Right. Um, when it comes to yeah, the chorus and hook is, is interchangeable, right? Yeah. Well, sometimes, sometimes in 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 music, when when we're talking about hook, it can be an yeah. intro, it can be a bridge, it can be a, a refrain, it can yeah, be yeah. a a pre-chorus. But there's a certain sure, thing sure. where people go, "Oh man, I love that breakdown," or it's just, it's a change up, that, and that yeah. becomes it's the thing that draws you in. Yeah. Hip hop, hip -hop yeah. is weird like that. Hip hop is yeah. weird like that because cer certain terms that work in other contexts and other music, for mm -hmm. example, even, even producer, when you say producer yeah. in rock music or any other music it it could be the person who goes and gets the band together and who acquires the it can, it can yeah, be a number yeah. of things right but in hip-hop producer typically means beat maker right um typically yeah. i mean there's, there's a little more to it but essentially it means the person who made the beat so same thing like in, in hip-hop when you say the hook it pretty much exclusively means the chorus okay. like exclusively okay. yeah all right cool so so this brings to another level because all of you have a little bit of music in your raps. Like you don't just do a whole rap with just all talking, talking, talking. I mean, Robert, I've heard your music and you've gone from, you do a, a, this whole rap and all of a sudden there's this chorus that just comes out and, and anyone can sing the chorus and then you go, yeah, yeah. And then, and then you go back into your rap again. So, so, yeah. so help me understand how that works for you. Now, both uh, Robert and, John, you said it starts with the lyric first, and then you get to the melody, I guess, or to the to the yeah. uh, part, the beat, if you want to call it. So if you both start oh, wait, that way, so when it gets to that musical part, is that, or your hook, is it, does the process reverse? Does it now go back to, I ought to find the beat to go with my chorus, there, or, do you, or just yeah. does it flow? How does that work for you? There, there are times for me where it's the same as what, what Drew said, where uh, you know, I got a beat, and you can you can hear it. like you start humming stuff, and you, you get you get some inspiration, and you start humming it out, and then you find words. You know, like like what Drew said, that, you know, you, you make the connecting points with 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 the, with the lyrics to that rhythm that you, that you came from the music. You know, so it, it, the music speaks for itself. We just gotta let it breathe. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, but in terms of having the worship that the worship element for me um, is has always been something that I've been inspired to. You know, and it, it's something that I, I, I noticed by traveling across Canada and seeing the divide between the Mennonite church, the black church, the native church. Um, man, so many different churches, but yet they all exist without each other, you know, in a sense where a lot of uh, Mennonite won't be comfortable sitting in uh, Jamaican service, you know, because it's a way different experience than 
if you go to midnight service and everyone's sitting quiet and then you go to Jamaican service and everyone's standing up loud, you know what I mean? And so it's like, I always wanted to be that bridge to, to connect all these different people to serve the one God and, 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 mm -hmm. and to be that bridge, to be able to say, we need to come together and worship. We need to be one voice as a nation. What is God saying to us as a nation um, in Canada, you know, so as the church, not just as artists or whatever, but as the, as the body of Christ, you know what I'm saying? So I've always been inspired by that. Say, I want to make him, I want to make a song to that we can all sing, you know, when we do, when we do get together, like one day when me and Drew and John are all together one day, we can all do a song and we can all connect with all of our people and sing this song together. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then the chorus comes and it's hallelujah. You know what I mean? Right, right. And, and it's worship yeah. to God. It's a, it's a worship to God. It's not just, it's a, it's an offering to God. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so, um, there are those songs that will exercise our faith and, and cause us to release a praise to God. Then there are the songs that we make specifically to infiltrate culture or infiltrate different parts of the society we live in. You know what I'm saying? But either way, um, for me, the worship one is probably the most important to me because I'm on a constant um, journey to discover what true worship is. You know, I want to think about when I think about King David, um, King David was they say he was the greatest king on earth. And, and you know, but yet but yet um, he was alive today. And most of the churches wouldn't allow him on the pulpit, you know what I'm saying, because of the things that he's done. So I'm, I'm on this journey to find worship, and what it really means besides the norm of what we see as, you know, Sunday morning and you know, 20 minutes before the message or 30 minutes or whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. So I, don't know, I think I went off topic there. but no, no, no. Oh, Preach. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll, uh, answer, I'll answer the question too. Um, uh, you know, we're making songs. And so this is, you know, we're, we're trying to consider, trying to consider that when I, when I signed with the label, um, in 2017, lost and found, like we were really challenged to listen to music and our label manager was really Motown influenced. And, um, so I listened to a lot of Motown and you start to think about what are the, the the hooks what are the things that um that are brought out of you when you hear a certain song or like oh yeah i know that song and you can only sing one line of that song yeah, yeah. you know it and you love it um you know motown is it's true you know they tried to i can't say it's a formula but, but you know obviously they did try to, to to put something in a box there where you know the songs are short and the hooks the choruses are fantastic yeah, and, um, and there's great melody, and, then, and and you feel something when it happens. And so I've really um, tried to address my song writing with that notion of feeling. It's the same way that Fresh talked about. You know, the music might evoke something, and it might evoke lyrics. But any writer, or musician, or songwriter should be trying to develop stuff from all angles. So there's times where I've sat in the studio with a chord progression or a sample. And so what does that feel like? What does it feel mm. like? And then once we label the feeling, now we go on to the hook. Now we go on to the chorus, right? I've got songs sitting in, in full, like, like Drew has um, ideas with topics. I have like songs, beats, and hooks that are complete that I haven't found the words for yet. Mm. So, so that's a complete reversal for the way that a lot of MCs write. They can write to other beats and then like you know popular beats and then find beats that work for them they can find a beat and have it speak to them emotionally and then just write it out um they can write poetry and turn it out they can write long form there's lots of different ways to do it so i think that when you're challenging yourself the more ways you do it the better um but but i've learned in recent years we're making songs um that will cause people to feel something and so you want to align the way that song feels with how you're feeling and then you'll make a connection with your audience and that's what's happened to, to me so you, then you're creating moments that you can share with your audience that's and it that's so cool and and you touched on poetry just i wanted just to encourage writers out there to practice writing poetry it, it gets you into the mindset of how to work lyrically to to produce uh words that actually have a rhyme scheme and work with your syncopations change the tempo and, and stretch your abilities within that frame of writing poetry that's a great way to start if you're learning learning how to write songs 
Um, I do want to just uh, go to the end of our conversation because we are coming close to the end of it. But I want to give you some time to talk about this. If you had to give three tips to a, an aspiring young songwriter rapper who is, just needs some sort of nuggets to help them get their footing, what would you give three simple tips? Hmm, three tips. Yeah. Let me see. Yeah, man. Always, well, I mean, one of the main things, especially with dealing with the young people today, is to always be real. Like, always don't try to be somebody that you're not just because, yep. like, I know guys here in the city who, Will 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 try to go join a gang because they want to be relevant to the streets. And I'm like, you don't need to join the gang. I know people who are in the gang who are trying to get out the gang because they had no other choice but to be in the gang. And then you got people trying to go in the gang to to be cool. And it's like, you know, it's like most of the people that are in gangs, they, that's their situation because they're stuck in there, and they want they want to find a way out, but they're stuck. Then there's this generation coming up that are just trying to fit into a certain thing because of, of of the media or because of social media and they want to look a certain way or to be perceived as a certain way and so it's like and it's like it's a great example of that is Takashi 69 is you know he, he you know he's a, a, a an instagram um guy who became big with his instagram and then became a rapper after that and then now you know wants to be the king of new york you know what i'm saying and it's like you know it's important to be real uh, as an artist to you know, to uh, make a difference in people's lives. Um, and so I think one one thing for me, I would say, is just to be real, always find out who you are first. Don't, you know, don't try to be somebody else, man. You know, discover your voice, like Drew said, for the longest time, you know, we, we spent a lot of our early time at being rappers, um, sound like somebody else or who we're inspired by. But one day the light turns on, we discover our voice and we find who we are as artists, you know what I'm saying? And so, yeah, I think it's important to to pursue being real in terms of, um, you know, if you if you if you come from a certain place, you know, if you come from, you know, the reserve, then you know, um, you know, talk about that. Talk about where you come from, and be, you know, don't be ashamed about where you come from, and 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 make sure that um, you can give back to where you came from. You know what I'm saying? So your music will reflect where you're from, and it'll also bring help and change to that culture. You know what I'm saying? Where you're from. Yeah, I've always said that Christ wants you to be the best version of you that you can be. So when exactly. you are that person, then you can be yourself. Yeah. Most definitely, yeah. Yeah, most definitely, yeah. So I'll give I'll give that one and I'll let I'll let them guys give the other the other two. So for me, that what 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 Fresh just said would have been my number one too. Like mm -hmm. authenticity is a big part of especially if you're talking about hip hop, authenticity is so important, right? Um people don't like you don't have to be you don't have to be from the streets you don't have to be from any particular background or race but people want you to be authentic right um but that does also lead me into my second into my my suggestion which would also be um you don't have to necessarily be from hip-hop culture in particular but respect it and study it right like study yeah. it and respect it because there's a lot of guys like even for example like you got a guy like drake i'm not saying he's not from hip-hop culture because he is, but he's not from the streets. He's not from the streets, right? But he he gets respect from the streets because he he doesn't like he like he he has he has respect for the streets. You know what I mean? So it's like if you're talking to a, spe a specific group of people or, or culture, you want to be able to to have enough respect to to understand that culture and study that culture. You know what I mean? Before you before you try to speak to it. So that that that's my advice. Like. Um, like I said, the advice that Fresh IE gave would have been my, my number one advice, which is just speak from where you're at. Just speak from, from who, like, you know, like people want to hear authenticity. They real recognize real. They just want to, like, they can under, they would rather you be a preppy rapper who owns being a preppy rapper than be a yeah. preppy rapper who is, yeah, than be a preppy rapper who's trying to sound like a street guy. Yeah, that's good. Would, I like that. Yeah, they would give more respect to the preppy guy. Now, Drew, Drew, your brand is so psychedelic. It's awesome. I love the the graphics. You guys seen oh, this graphic? It's just so psychedelic. I'm inspired um, by the that, that type of stuff. So yeah, yeah, yeah. He got he got, he got that he got that Krishna psychedelic. That yeah, Krishna psychedelic going on. Yeah, wow. Uh, yeah, respect to both of those answers. It makes a lot of sense, and it's glad that we're all on the same page. Um, when I do workshops, writing workshops. Um, 
even in, in schools like creative writing, that kind of stuff. I talk about, uh, I say, keep the creative goal in mind. Um, and it used to say, keep the goal in mind, but you got a lot of folks just, you know, saying they want to be rich. And there's, uh, you know, that's a different aspiration. If you're trying to create something, um, what, what do you want to create? Um, who are your influences? And then back to what Drew said about respecting the culture and then studying the culture. Study the greats. Um, there's a lot out there. You know, when I was, when I was young coming up, I couldn't take a, really, a lot of heavy content um, uh, or, you know, like a lot of foul language, that kind of stuff. I just couldn't, I couldn't take it. Uh, but there's great rappers out there that don't do that stuff um, that, uh, that you can learn from. So like, you know, now we're diverse enough that you can grab and get studying. Um, the, the second thing I think it's the most important for me is uh, I said, keep the faucet on, keep the creative faucet on, always create, continue to create, find ways to work around writer's block. That's a, that's a big one. Find ways to work around writer's block. Um, because once you can uh, control your output and you have the, um, uh, where you feel like you have a mastery of your creative process, there's, then you have all these different tools and ways to get started, to, to keep going when you're struggling, um, uh, or to sort of finish out that last, you know, that, that, that last bit of writing, the last verse you need. So um, it's like, keep creating, always just keep creating. Um, be willing to recognize what, it, what can be tossed away um, right. and, and that's what freestyle has done for me, right? Like, so right. I'm say like uh, in the shower or going for a walk, um, sometimes these words are come up to me and I'll just let it go and flow knowing that I'm not going to keep any of it. Yeah, right? but it's like a muscle, right, John? That's it's like it. you're working it out and you, you get, you get bigger and stronger each time. Yeah, exactly. And then the last thing I say in those workshops is keep challenging yourself, right? So um, any, you know, from a musician standpoint or musical standpoint, any, album or project that I'm doing, I want it to be different and better than the last one. So, um, the, so the goals continue to get bigger uh, for me because, you know, I've done this and done that and made these albums and worked with these people. And it's okay, you know, well, I want to challenge myself in a different way. So the, the motivation has got to be intrinsic, internal. And so, yeah, those are, those are the three things I would say. They're, they're broad, you know, if you're just starting out, you know, writing stuff down, just get it out. That was, that would be the biggest thing, like step number one for people that are just starting, get it on the page, read it out loud, see how it sounds, and you can see what's good and what, and what can be improved. On. Yeah, there's wisdom in that. Thanks, John. That's amazing. Guys, you have been all fabulous tonight. Just blessed. I'm totally blessed to be here in your presence. Yeah, big fan. This is great. Um, thank you so much, um, especially in this uh, troubled time that we're all kind of negotiating and trying to figure out um we want to thank you guys for joining us tonight uh robert drew and john you guys have been phenomenal this has been so much fun and just wanted to remind everybody out there listening right now that this interview is um up on youtube at gmi hub tv please go check it out don't forget subscribe and click the notification bell comment all that all that jazz it'd be great to have you guys be part of our our support and just uh yeah thank you so much for joining us any final words um just, uh, you know, I've got new content out daily. Like, I'm in the middle of a project. So, you know, please follow at Drew Bex. Yeah, we've, we've got some. I'm going to have your uh, links at the end of the video of all your different social medias and stuff. So we'll get a chance for people to gonna, gonna send traffic your way, man, to support what you do. And I got tracks. I got tracks on deck from Drew and from John. No way. That's cool. <laughs> That's coming <laughs> too, man. Big yeah. up. Good. Can't wait. And plus, uh, yeah. hey, I, let me say it too, I'm a big fan of both of you guys. So yeah. this is this is a blessing, man, to be able to connect. You're, you're, you're a legend. You're a legend, bro. You're a legend, yeah. man. Now, so, Robert, you are a legend, man. It's for sure. Blessings, man. Thank you guys so much. Hey, be blessed, man, and, and uh, uh, happy Canada Day to you guys, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. For me, John Corbin Music, uh, J O N No H, um, and John Corbin Music dot com. I've started to do some writing uh, weekly. Um, so that's up on the website, also at Substack, johncorbin.substack.com. Um, and yeah, trying to put out singles, um, even responding to this time. Um, I have a song out now called Outcry, uh, which talks about protests. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm trying to make sense of this time through writing 
and uh, and then rap and then rap coaching for the young folks and the adults that want to learn to rap is rapcoach.ca. Yeah, man, that's cool. That's a great resource for young aspiring rappers or, or young people that just love rap music. And John, thank you for that. That's amazing. And Drew too, you got great passion there helping people, mentoring. It's awesome. I also wanted to mention <laughs> um, that uh, based on our last show, there is an opportunity to uh, get microphones. So all of you have been talking about um, spitting and, and doing all that kind of stuff. Well, if you need a microphone, we do have a sponsor right now, Archtop Studios, who has offered, uh, they're, they're actually the distributor for Lewitt microphones. And we can get, if you go to our website and sign up to be on our mailing list, you can get a 20% discount on your next order of Lewitt microphones. So please do so before July the 2nd. Um, and uh, we'll have Archtop Studios fulfill your order for you. Other than that, we just want to say thank you, all of you, for joining us. We hope this video was helpful. If you have any other questions, certainly send it in the comments and send it our way. We will get those questions out to Drew, uh, Drew, John, and Fresh, and I'm sure they'll be happy to respond to you because their hearts are to mentor their, their hearts are like our hearts. They yeah, want to encourage yeah, unity, yeah. community, mentorship, and talent growth, which is what we're all about too. Yeah. So once again, thank you so much for being with us and we'll see you next time. Bye.